A ray of light is incident at the glass water interface at an angle i. It finally emerges parallel to the surface of water, then the value of mu g, refractive index of glass, would be. Okay, so there are three different media. One is glass, one is water, one is air. So there are two boundaries. One is a glass water boundary and another is the water air boundary. So a ray of light is incident at the glass water boundary at an angle i. Okay, so it will get refracted. Once it gets refracted, it would be incident on the air water boundary. So it will again get refracted and we see that when it gets refracted here, it emerges parallel to the surface of the water. We have to figure out what is the refractive index of glass. Okay, so the key concept involved here is Snell's law, which is the crux of this session. Mu1 sin i1 is equal to mu2 sin i2. Mu1 is the refractive index of the medium in which the incident ray is there and mu2 is the refractive index of the medium in which the refracted ray is there. i1 is the angle of incidence and i2 is the angle of refraction. Okay, using this concept, we're going to solve this question. All right, first let's talk about the refraction at the glass water boundary. Okay, can we say that mu1 sin i1 is equal to mu2 sin i2? Correct. Okay, now we are going to substitute for what is mu1, what is i1, what is mu2, what is i2, okay? So the incident ray is in the glass medium. So can we say mu of glass into sin i, and let's say the angle of refraction is r, so this becomes mu of water, which is the medium in which refracted ray is there, multiplied by sin of r, okay? Can I note this as equation number one, okay? Done. Now we talk about the refraction at the water-air boundary, okay? So if this angle is r, then this angle is also going to be r because it is, these are alternate, alternate angles, okay? So the angle of incidence on this boundary becomes r, okay? And what is the angle of refraction? The angle of refraction is 90 degree, okay? So can we say that mu1, what will be mu1 in this case? Mu1 would be mu of water. That is the medium in which the incident ray is there, okay? Multiplied by sine of r, which is the angle of incidence in this case. This is, is equal to mu of air multiplied by sine of the refracted the angle of refraction. And how much is that? That is 90 degree. Is that correct? Okay, so we have two equations and what we need to figure out is mu g. Now what we see here is these two quantities are absolutely equal. So can we say mu g sine i should be equal to mu a sine 90 degree? Of course we can say that. So this becomes mu g is equal to value of mu a, that is the refractive index of air, which is one, sine 90 degree is one, and this will be divided by sine i. Hence my answer is going to be mu g is equal to one upon sine i. Okay, let's have a look at the options. So option B is going to be the right option. And the takeaway here is that when multiple refractions are happening, then mu1 sin i1 is equal to mu2 sin i2 is equal to mu3 sin i3, and this keeps on going, okay? So we could have taken mu1 sin i1 here, and we could have taken mu3 sin i3 here and directly equated. And basically that is what we did, but we could do this directly if we remember this. All right, now let's move to the next question. Refractive index of glass with respect to water is 9 by 8 and refractive index of glass with respect to air is 3 by 2. The refractive index of water with respect to air will be, okay? So we are talking about the refractive index of one medium with respect to the other medium. What does that actually mean? So the key concept involved here is that when we write one mu2 or when we write mu21, we basically mean the refractive index of medium two with respect to the refractive index of medium one. And this means it is going to be mu2 upon mu1. That is the key concept involved here. So let's try to solve this question. So I have mu glass with respect to water. Can I say that mu glass upon mu water is nine by eight by the thing that we just learned? Absolutely. Next mu glass with respect to air is 3 by 2, which means mu of glass upon mu of air is equal to 3 by 2. That is also pretty simple. Now, what do we want? We want mu of 
water with respect to air. So can I say that is going to be mu water divided by mu air. Now using this and this, I want the ratio mu water upon mu air. Okay, how can I do that? Not very difficult. So if we take this equation and divide this equation by this equation, then are we going to get that? Of course. So this becomes mu g upon mu a and we are dividing it by this. So this will become mu water upon mu g and this is going to become 3 by 2 divided by 9 by 8 or multiplied by 8 by 9. Is that correct? So mu g goes from here. So you see it becomes mu water upon mu air. 3, 3, 2, 4. So what is the answer? The answer is going to be 4 by 3. And let's have a look at the options. So obviously option C is going to be the right answer. In the figure shown, what is the apparent distance of the fish as seen by the bird? Okay, so the bird is seeing a fish and they are in different media. The refractive index is different. Okay, so would the bird see the real fish or would the bird see the image formed due to refraction? Okay, probably the latter is correct. And hence we have to find out the apparent distance of the fish as seen by the bird. Okay, so the key concept involved here is apparent depth and real depth. Okay, so for near normal incidence, apparent depth by real depth is equal to mu2 upon mu1 where depth is always measured from the boundary of the surface. And what is mu1? Mu1 is the refractive index of the medium in which the incident ray is there. And mu2 is the refractive index of the medium in which the refracted ray is there. Okay. So in this situation, the bird is watching the fish. Okay. So the light ray is going from the fish to the bird. Okay. Now the fish is actually over here. So this is the boundary, hence the real depth is measured from the boundary and this is going to be the real depth, okay? Now due to refraction, it will appear to the bird that the fish is here. And again, the measurement has to be done from the boundary. So this is going to be the apparent depth, okay? Another thing is, why does the shift happen in that direction? Okay, why not the opposite direction? Let's under understand that as well. So apparent depth upon real depth is equal to mu2 upon mu1. Okay, so what is mu2? This is mu2, this is mu1. Now, in this case, light ray is going from the denser medium to the rarer medium. Okay, so mu1 has to be greater than mu2. In that case, this has to be less than 1. Okay, mu1 is greater than mu2. So in this case, apparent depth comes out less, less than real depth. Okay, that is why the shift happened in the direction of the incident light. Okay, when light is going from denser medium to rarer medium, the shift is going to happen in the direction of the incident light. Perfect. Now the opposite case can also be true. Now the fish is seeing the bird. Okay, so where is the bird? The bird is here and this is the boundary. Hence, this is going to be the real depth. And the light ray is going to go in what direction? The light ray is going to go from the bird to the fish. Okay. Now, due to refraction, it will appear to the fish that the bird is here. Hence, again, measuring from the boundary, this is going to be the apparent depth. Okay. Why did the shift happen in this scenario? So, apparent depth upon real depth is equal to mu2 upon mu1. Now, what is mu2? This is going to be mu2 because this is the medium in which the refractive, uh, I mean, the refracted ray is there. And this is going to be mu1. This is the medium in which incident ray is there. Okay. Now, which is, which has more refractive index? Okay. Mu2 is the denser medium. So, mu2 will be greater than mu1. So, this becomes greater than 1. And hence, I get apparent depth greater than real depth. Okay. So, when the light is going from rarer medium to denser medium, apparent depth would be greater than real depth. And hence, the object will appear to have shifted further or opposite to the direction of incident light. Okay. This is the core concept involved. And if you are clear with this, all the questions you'll be able to solve very easily. Okay. So let's do just that and quickly solve this question. Okay. Now the bird is watching the fish. So the light ray is going in this direction. Is that correct? So I can write apparent depth. So this D prime is basically the apparent depth divided by real depth is equal to mu2 upon mu1. Okay, perfect. Now let's substitute. I want to find out the apparent depth. What is the real depth? Okay, this is going to be the real depth. 
So let's say this is 36 meter. Mu2, very careful, mu2, the refractive index of the medium in which refracted ray is there, this medium. Is that correct? So this becomes 1 and what is mu1? This is going to be mu1. Okay, so 4 divided by 3. So 3 is going to go upstairs. So 4, 9. D prime comes out to be 27 meter. Okay, so the fish is going to appear somewhere over here. And hence the apparent depth is 27 meter. Correct. Now what is the distance the bird sees the image of the fish? Okay, it is this distance. And not difficult to guess at all. That is going to be 36 meter plus 27 meter. And that will become 3 and 6. So this is going to become 63 meter. And that's it. Okay. If you're clear with the concept, it's going to take very less time to solve these questions. Okay. That is my answer. And hence, option C is going to be the correct option. In the figure shown, what is the apparent distance of the bird as seen by the fish? Okay. So in this case, the fish is watching the bird. So what will be the direction of light? This will be the direction of light. Okay. So if you remember the key concept, let's solve this question quickly. Can I say apparent depth by real depth is equal to mu2 by mu1? Absolutely. So let's see what is what. So apparent depth, I'm taking it as d prime divided by real depth. Now, what is the object here? The bird is the object here. So this 36 meter is going to be the real depth. Is that correct? So 36 over here. Mu2, what is the direction in which light is going? Light is going like this. So what is the medium in which refracted ray is there? Obviously, this is that medium. So this becomes mu2. And mu1 is 1, which I can divide like this. Okay. So 3, 12, d prime comes out to be 48 meter, which means from here, the image of the bird would be at 48 meter, okay? So at what distance is the fish going to see it from itself? It is going to see it at this distance. And that is very easy to see. That is 48 meter plus 32 meter. How much is that going to be? That is going to be 86141 and 84 meter. And that should be my answer. All right, let's have a look at the options. So option A obviously is going to be the right option. A fish in an aquarium approaches the left wall at a rate of 3 meter per second and observes a fly approaching it at 8 meter per second. If the refractive index of water is 4 by 3, find the actual velocity of the fly. Okay, so there is a fish, it is moving inside the aquarium towards the left wall at 3 meter per second and it appears to the fish that the bee is moving towards it at a velocity of 8 meter per second. Okay, now there are two things happening here and we need to be very careful about that. Let's say that the fish were stationary. It was not moving. Will the fish see the actual velocity of the bee? Probably not because there is refraction going to happen. So the fish, if it was stationary, would see a different velocity of the bee, which would not be its real velocity. Okay, let's call that apparent velocity. Okay, now the fish itself is moving towards the bee at a certain velocity. Hence, the fish is going to see yet another velocity of the bee. Okay, these two are very important factors here. And hence, let's try to solve them. Okay, first of all, let's say this is the apparent velocity of the bee. And this is the velocity of the fish. Okay, they're going to move towards each other. Now, under this circumstance, the fish sees the velocity as 8 meter per second. Is that correct? Now, the velocities are in the same, in the going towards each other. Hence, the relative velocity would be the addition of these two. So, can I say velocity apparent of the B plus velocity of the fish is going to be equal to 8 meter per second, which is the relative velocity? Absolutely. So, from here, I get velocity apparent is equal to 8 minus 3, velocity of fish is 3. So this becomes 5 meter per second. Okay, so we have found out the apparent velocity of the B. Now we need to find out what is the real velocity of the B. Okay, so let's analyze the situation. Let's say that the B is at a distance x real. Okay, now at this position, where would the image of the B formed? The image of the B would be formed somewhere here. Let's call this x apparent. Okay, why that? Because 
the light is going to go from the rarer medium to the denser medium. Hence, the shift is going to happen opposite to the direction of incident light. Okay, that's not important for this problem. But anyway, it was here. So I just brought it to your notice. Okay, now can we say that since refraction is happening, apparent depth by real depth should be equal to mu2 upon mu1? We can say that absolutely. Now, what is the apparent depth? The apparent depth is x apparent. Okay. What is the real depth? The real depth is x real. This is equal to mu2 where we need to be careful. Light is going from this medium to this medium. Okay. Which means medium 2 or mu2 is going to be this. Okay. Because that is going to contain the refracted light. So this becomes 4 by 3 and then divided by 1 which is mu1. So from here, what do I get? I get x real is equal to 3 upon 4 x apparent, right? So this is the relationship between the real depth and the apparent depth, okay? Now, if I want the velocity, all I need to do is differentiate these positions, okay? So if I differentiate with respect to time, I'm going to get v real is equal to 3 by 4 into v apparent. Is that correct? Okay, so from here I can say v real is going to be 3 by 4 multiplied by v apparent. We have figured this out, which is 5 meter per second. So this is 15 upon 4. Hence, my final answer is going to be 3.75 meter per second. All right, so let's have a look at the options. And option C is going to be the right option.